We welcome you inside Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York for week three of eight in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. We want to take you back to seven nights ago last Saturday afternoon where the first round of the CWC continued as Mustafa Ali took on one half of Los Lotharios, Angel Garza. And Angel Garza was already coming to this match with the mind game in set. He owned a previous victory over Mustafa Ali and that may have played into the result as lightning struck twice and Angel Garza upset Ali in the first round of the CWC. And then later on that evening, we saw NXT's Nathan Fraser in the biggest opportunity of his young career battle a former NXT Tag Team Champion in Wesley. And some amazing aerial offense in this matchup, followed up with some amazing strikes. Both these men leaving everything in the kitchen sink inside the squared circle. But in the end, it was the young and hungry Nathan Fraser scaling the ropes, a beautiful picture perfect Phoenix Flash, and punched his ticket to the quarterfinal finals but coming up right here this afternoon in manhattan new york you will see the other half of los lotharios humberto carrillo battle the human highlight reel ricochet who's coming off an unfortunate loss and beating last night on smackdown and kicking us off in moments monday night raw's tyler bait takes on the submission specialist drew gulak in another first round battle in the midst of the cruiserweight classic tournament Let's take a look right now at both of these men coming into this matchup this evening. Drew Gulak standing 6'1", 194 pounds, fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. And Drew Gulak coming into this matchup, a veteran of the Cruiserweight division, former one-time champion of said division. And as for the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, Waltz into Manhattan, New York tonight, standing 5'7", a solid 175 pounds of muscle. Of course, fighting out of the United Kingdom, a place where he once became the first ever NXT United Kingdom Champion. But it all comes down to this afternoon, Gulak, Tyler Bate, the first round of the CWC continues. Who is going to move on to the quarterfinals in just a number of weeks? The big strong boy, Waltz is down the aisle here in Manhattan. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Dudley, England, weighing in at 175 pounds, Tyler Bates. Well, Tyler Bates unfortunately rolling into this matchup tonight with a little bit of less momentum than he would have liked. Remember two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, Bates teamed up with the other Monday Night Raw participant in the CWC, that being Ilya Dragunov, who will participate next week. And the two men took on the brawling brutes, Butch and Ridge Holland. But unfortunately for Bate and Dragunov, victory was not to be. The brawling brutes pick up the win on that night. But Tyler Bate, however, waltzing into a tournament tonight. And remember back, back in the early spring when Tyler Bate participated in the King of the Ring tournament. He made it to the quarterfinals of that tournament. Gotta wonder if Tyler Bate is gonna have lightning strike twice tonight. But will he be able to get through the submission specialist, a brawler, a grappler, in Drew Gulak, a man who was introduced to the WWE in the original Cruiserweight Classic back in 2016. Tyler Bate looks locked and loaded, ready to go. But here comes the man all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And his opponent from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Weighing in at 193 pounds, Drew Gulak! Well, Drew Gulak's fighting out of a place that has a very fight or die attitude, and Drew Gulak not opposed to any fight at any time, but tonight the fight bigger than he could have possibly imagined. The first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. And as we've been discussing for weeks, remember what is on the line in this tournament. Not only the right to call yourself the winner of the 2023 CWC, but also to earn a future opportunity at the WWE Cruiserweight Championship that of course will be defended on September the 16th at no mercy as the current champion Santos Escobar puts the gold on the line against Alpha Academy's Chad Gable. But here we go, kicking things off this afternoon in Manhattan, New York. Drew Gulak, the big strong boy, Tyler Bate. The bell has sounded and we are underway with the next first round matchup in the CWC. And Drew Gulak hot off the gate with the power bomb. They call Tyler Bate the big strong boy, but Drew Gulak very versatile inside of that squared circle. 
Already said it this evening, but he is a submission specialist from bell to bell, no doubt about it. Former amateur wrestler, Drew Gulak loves to take things to the mat. Also has that brawling instinct. I think that comes from that Philadelphia background where Gulak grew up, where he learned to fight inside of the ring. Drew Gulak, a little bit of power in his offense as well, but Tyler Bate, certainly the more agile of the two in this contest. As he showcases right there, off the shooting star, but only a one count. It's a great matchup here. Great pairing, stylistic pairing in the first round of the CWC. Again, Tyler Bate representing Monday Night Raw, Drew Gulak representing Friday Night SmackDown. Of course, brand supremacy, not necessarily what is at stake in this tournament, but I'm sure a little bit, a little bit of bragging rights will always be there. As Drew, Drew Gulak hits that lariat to the back of Tyler Bate, knocking him off his boots. Drew Gulak again, so versatile inside of that ring. Tyler Bate better have done his homework on this former Cruiserweight champion coming into the tournament tonight. Tyler Bate has held gold here in WWE before, as you just saw in the graphic a few moments ago. The first ever NXT United Kingdom champion, former NXT Tag Team champion as well. And Tyler Bate, a man who has really taken the main roster by storm over this last year and change. We've seen him on SmackDown, we have seen him on Raw. He's had a few opportunities to capitalize on championship gold. Unfortunately, have not gone Tyler Bates way. But every opportunity, a chance to change your momentum here in WWE. And that's what Tyler Bate is looking to do this afternoon. Oh man, what a maneuver! Tyler Bate, halfway across the ring, delivers the uppercut to Gulak. Drew Gulak goes down, only a one count. But credit where it's due, Tyler Bate came to play. And what an exploder! Down goes Gulak, and Tyler Bate is getting fired up in the middle of Hammerstein. And Drew Gulak, sense of urgency now, springing to his feet, and drops Tyler Bate with a simple yet effective elbow. That's the brawling instinct coming out of Drew Gulak here tonight. A nice snap suplex. Gulak not afraid to keep things simple yet effective. It's one of the tools that have made Gulak so successful throughout his career. A veteran of the ring, world travel, has held championships all across the gold. Do your homework, Drew Gulak has been around and he's made some waves in the WWE in the past, but can tonight be the night that takes Drew Gulak to prominence once again in the Cruiserweight division? Tyler Bay trying to get back into this. Gulak having none of it in a simple big boot, but yes, again, effective. Now Gulak sent him bait into the ropes. Tyler had it scouted, however. Drew Gulak now could be going for a little gut wrench power bomb, and down goes Bate again. That is the power instinct of Drew coming out as we discussed earlier. Tyler Bate down and out. Drew Gulak starting to control this matchup. Russell, his style of matchup. As Gulak charges at Bate, there's a counter. Big time German on the outside of the ring. What a counter by the big strong boy. That is certainly a way to change the tide to the matchup. Gulak back inside the ring. Tyler Bate on the apron. Bate not able to capitalize. And now Gulak on his tail. Oh no. And on the apron goes the spine of Tyler Bate. Drew Gulak making him pay for his sins tonight in Manhattan, New York. Drew Gulak wants the gold, wants the opportunity, wants to advance to the quarterfinals of the CWC in just a few weeks. This is week three of a 16-man, eight-week tournament. Four casualties so far. Four men have moved on to the quarterfinals. The second half of the bracket is beginning right here tonight. Who is going to meet Dominic Mysterio, Johnny Gargano, Angel Garza, Nathan Fraser on the other side. And Drew Gulak going to the sky, not usually in his arsenal, but not afraid to throw caution in the wind tonight in the means of success. Dropping that elbow on the spine of Tyler Bate that he already dropped on the apron a few moments ago. Now it's Tyler Bate on the reverse. A sense of urgency out of Tyler Bate now. Trying to get back into this matchup. We see Tyler just simply resorting to some strikes to try to take the momentum back. He's got to muster up the energy, muster up the endurance again to Really kick things into high gear. Possibly take things to the air. We know Tyler Bate is not afraid to do so. 
You like hoisted in the corner, and what a uppercut. Tyler Bay has delivered some mean strikes throughout this contest thus far. And a couple of uppercuts have certainly done him good. It's that UK background of the big strong boy, but there's Drew Gulak again not having none of it. Simply taking Tyler Bate down with one of the oldest tricks in the book. It never goes out of style. The suplex pays dividends for Gulak. Now Tyler Bate in the grass. Gulak's got a all kinds are wrapped up there. And another exploder variation into the cover. And that may do it. But Tyler Bate gets the shoulder up. Gulak almost had him. Awesome maneuver there by an awesome talent in Drew Gulak. And now going for the Dragon Sleeper. Gulak has won championships all around the globe with this very submission hold. And it may be the maneuver that punches his ticket to the quarterfinals tonight. Tyler Bates got to hold on. He's close to the ropes, but not really in the position to reach out and grab him. Does Bate have the endurance to get out of this? A nice counter there, nice counter. Rolled out of it, used his momentum to shift the weight and roll out of the Dragon Sleeper. And now sends Gulak over the top rope. A sense of urgency in the big strong boy. Wait a minute, Tope Suicida through the ropes. Shot out like a cannon is Tyler Bate. And that's certainly a way to change the tides of this matchup as Gulak was really starting to inch closer to victory. That exploder, the dragon suplex. Tyler Bate took things to the sky, threw caution in the wind, and it worked out in his favor. Well, maybe only at least for a moment, as Gulak with another exploder. Tyler Bate has shown signs of life in this match, but Gulak, in my eyes, has controlled the majority. But Tyler Bate not going to stop fighting until he hears a bell. Nice takedown by the big strong boy, former NXT United Kingdom champion, knows what it takes to win under the lights, to win under the pressure. But can he seize the moment tonight? Gulak up against the ropes. Not sure what Tyler Bates got in mind. Goes for the Irish whip. Gulak with the counter, the forearm, not watching his back. Slingshot Lariat. Amazing maneuver by Tyler Bates. And Gulak's now on spaghetti legs. And Bates gonna bring him back down to size. Looking for the reverse. Boston Crab. He has tapped out Sami Zayn to this maneuver. Dating back to the first round of King of the Ring in May. And Drew Gulak may be about to suffer the same fate. Gulak is wrenched up. I don't know from my vantage point if he's close enough to reach the ropes. But no need as Gulak picks the ankle. And now Drew trying to get things going. Couple of lariats there, and a nice takedown. Bait taken off his feet. Gotta respect the game that Gulak is bringing to the dance tonight. And dropping that bare knee, the bone on Tyler Bait. Now Bait rolling to the outside, and wait a minute, Gulak again. We said it earlier, we will repeat ourselves, not afraid to throw caution in the wind in the means of victory, especially after he has thrown out some of his best maneuvers already. What a missile drop kick to Tyler Bate. And now what has Gulak got in mind? Could be looking to wrench Tyler Bate's spine in all kinds of different directions on the outskirts of the ring. Yeah, what a match we got kicking things off tonight in Hammerstein Ballroom. First round of the Cruiserweight Classic. So far, four men have moved on to the quarterfinals. Johnny Gargano, Dominic Mysterio, Angel Garza, and Nathan Fraser. Tonight kicks off the second half of the bracket. Drew Gulak and Tyler Bate putting on an incredible performance right now. And later tonight, the other half of Los Lotharios' Humberto Carrillo battles the human highlight Rio Ricochet. Gulak trying to keep things on the outside. I think he wants to tap into that brawling style, but Tyler Bate not going to have none of it. And that's smart by Bate to create this distance. Try to catch a breather. And try to get back into this match, and now sends Drew Gulak over the top rope by force. Amazing strength there out of the big strong boy. And again, I like that decision making by Tyler Bate, not following Gulak to the outside. Going to hit, going to strike. They're going to allow Gulak to get back in the ring and wait to capitalize. It clearly works out in Tyler Bates' favor as Gulak hoisted on the ropes. And look at the strength from the big strong boy. A superplex in the middle of Manhattan. Tyler Bates is starting to pick up steam. And Drew Gulak is down. But could he be out as Bates scales the ropes? Could be looking for the spiral tap. 
What a maneuver by Tyler Bate. Gulak's down. Will that be a three? And that'll do it. An awesome contest to kick things off. Hey, credit where credit's due. Drew Gulak gave Tyler Bate the fight of his life this afternoon. But in the end, the three count and the result will say that Tyler Bate is victorious and that the big strong boy is moving on to the quarterfinals of the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. What a matchup to kick things off in Manhattan, New York. Here is your winner, Tyler Bates. Awesome win for Tyler Bates. Let's take a look at the updated bracket. We now have five wrestlers moving on to the quarterfinals. Tyler Bates moves on as Drew Gulak's name fades to black. But who is going to move on to fight Tyler Bate in the quarterfinals? We will find out in mere moments here in Manhattan, New York, as the one and only Ricochet looks to contest one half of Los Lotharios and Humberto Carrillo. But right now, the moment belongs to the big, strong boy. We are on the verge of one of the biggest weekends in Universe Mode history, a September doubleheader on the 16th. No Mercy, a SmackDown exclusive live event, and 24 hours later on the 17th, Unforgiven, a Raw exclusive live event. What is taking place on No Mercy? So far announced the Cruiserweight Championship is on the line. The Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar, defends the gold against Alpha Academy's master, Chad Gable. A lot of bad blood in this women's division matchup. The ballsy badass Shotzi battles the EST Bianca Belair. Former rivals turned best friends, now bitter enemies. Shotzi and Belair once more at no mercy. And who will reign atop the WWE Women's Division as its champion, champion the Poison Pixie Candice LeRae? Runs things back with the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Will she win the gold? We find out in just a matter of weeks. And for the United States Championship, the meaner than evil man himself, Braun Breaker, threw down the gauntlet and the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, took the bait. It's Cody Rhodes versus Braun Breaker, one-on-one -on -one for the red, white, blue, and gold. And so far, signed for the 17th at Unforgiven from Raw, the WWE World Tag Team titles are on the line. The Brawling Brutes got a lot of history with the Judgment Day. They're going to reignite that flame and look to bring home the tag team titles. And you want to talk about a lot of history? The man, Becky Lynch, has been so self-focused on getting that win back over the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka from WrestleMania. She has not been able to move on since. Asuka and Becky Lynch one more time on the 17th. And inside a steel cage, the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar has made a list. He is checking it twice, and he has got a score to settle with the original bro, Matt Riddle, inside the confines of the steel. And signed earlier this week, the WWE Championship is on the line. The Celtic warrior Sheamus, the visionary, Seth freaking Rollins. Sheamus wants retribution for Rollins, putting him on the shelf, but can he win gold in the process? And coming your way next Saturday afternoon, the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament concludes as the Irish ace, J.D. McDonough, battles Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze. What a matchup that is going to be. Nice contrast in styles seven nights from today. And also coming your way next week, Monday Night Raw's Invincible. Ilya Dragunov takes on Friday Night SmackDown's Axiom all the way from Spain. That is going to be an awesome matchup. Dragunov, a former Intercontinental Champion. Axiom, one of the most exciting stars today. All that is coming your way next Saturday afternoon. But coming your way up next here in Manhattan, New York, one half of Los Lotharios, Humberto Curio, challenges the human highlight reel, Ricochet. Let's take a look at these two men heading into this first round battle. Humberto Carrillo standing 6'1", 190 pounds from Monterey, Mexico. And in his career, he has won Tag Team Championship gold at Crash Lucha Libre with Angel Garza, his current tag team partner. Accolades all across the world, but will tonight be Humberto's biggest win of his career. 
And as for his opponent, the one and only Ricochet, 5'7", 190 pounds, fighting out of Kentucky in the U.S. of A. And of course, over the last 12 months, he has held the Cruiserweight Championship, the World Tag Team Championship, one half of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners. But coming off a loss 24 hours ago, how will Ricochet's momentum fare coming up next at the CWC? It is main event time here in the Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York. Another Saturday afternoon is coming and going in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic. Humberto Carrillo, Ricochet, set to lock horns, one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the Big Apple. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, representing Los Lavarios from Monterey, Mexico. Weighing in at 198 pounds, Humberto! The most interesting situation coming into this matchup is what happened last week. Humberto Carrillo's tag team partner, Angel Garza, picking up the victory against Ricochet's tag team partner in Mustafa Ali. That's one up for Los Lotharios. Angel Garza is on his way to the quarterfinals, but who is gonna be on the other side of the bracket? Humberto Carrillo, his tag team partner, or will it be the one, the only, human highlight reel of the world wrestling entertainment, Ricochet! And his opponent from Paducah, Kentucky, weighing in at 190 pounds, Ricochet! It has not been so hot of an eight days for the one and only Ricochet. Last week on SmackDown, he fell to the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes in his pursuit of the United States Championship. And just less than 24 hours ago, Ricochet was inside of the ring against the mean and hungry Braun Breaker in another unfortunate loss. And then after the bell, the Nigerian giant Omos making his way to ringside, ragdolling Ricochet from pillar to post, obviously taking issue with the fact that Ricochet defeated him a few weeks back in Sacramento on SmackDown. Gotta wonder how Ricochet's body is gonna hold up tonight and where the mental state is at for the one and only. But this is it, the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. Go big or go home. It's a single elimination tournament. There's no going back for Humberto Carrillo and Ricochet. The bell has sounded. Who's moving on to the quarterfinals? Ricochet hot off the bell into that snap German into the bridge. Only a one. Remember what happened earlier tonight? Tyler Bate picking up the victory against Drew Gulak. He will meet the winner of this match in just a few short weeks in the quarterfinals of the CWC. And Ricochet meets the knees of Humberto Carrillo. Gotta wonder what is hurting the most of Ricochet. It's gotta be that midsection. He took a mean spear from Braun Breaker last night. Got ragdolled all around ringside by Omas. There's no way Ricochet is coming into this match 100%. Humberto However, definitely going to be on his A game, realizing what Ricochet has been through as of this last eight days and just the last 24 hours alone. And you know Humberto is going to try to capitalize tonight. A beautiful Spanish fly in the early going from Monterey, Mexico, all the way to Manhattan, New York. Humberto Carrillo, an extremely underrated talent, as his Angel Garza, and they're looking to break out in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic. Ricochet on the outside, Humberto heading to the top. You gotta be kidding me! Dropping the elbow on the chest, on the heart and soul of Ricochet. Humberto came to play tonight, leaving all the cards on the table. And Ricochet is feeling the brunt of it right now. Ricochet is reeling in pain, dead center of the canvas. Meanwhile, Carrillo scales the ropes and drops another elbow. And Ricochet may be down and out in the early going. Into the cover, gets the two. Not enough to get the three count, but very early on in this matchup, we are seeing Ricochet fight an uphill battle, which in my eyes is usually a rare occurrence. 
Ricochet has been a main player here in WWE for years, but as you just saw in the graphic a few moments ago, in the last 12 months alone, Ricochet has been the Cruiserweight Champion for over six months, one half of the Tag Team Champions, one half of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Tournament winners earlier this year with Mustafa Ali. As of late, things not going so hot for Ali nor Ricochet. And tonight that bad luck may continue. As Ricochet is on spaghetti legs, Humberto comes from the sky. Ricochet avoids the drop kick, and there's a punt by the one and only. And the shooting star press for good measures. Into the cover, only a one count. And even though we're just in the first few minutes of this match, that speaks volumes on how much Humberto has been in control, opposed to Ricochet, that he was only able to get the one count there. Nice missile drop kick by Ricochet. As hard as he possibly could on the landing. The tilt the world head scissors. I think Ricochet is just trying to find a way to keep Humberto down just for a moment in this match. Probably catch a breather. Trying to regroup in the middle of Manhattan, New York tonight. Ricochet staying on the offense. Hurting or not, we know one thing about the one and only and that he is going to come give this match up as he does any other match, everything he's got in the tank. As he puts Humberto Carrillo, an opportune state on the top. Ricochet looking to up the ante, a Spanish fly from the top rope. Anything you can do, I can do better, says the one and only. Hammerstein Ballroom is coming unglued as Carrillo and Ricochet already tearing down the roof of this joint in the early going. Humberto on the outside. You remember we saw that Spanish fly by Humberto on the canvas a few minutes ago. Ricochet up in the ante. Spanish fly from the top rope. Neither get the victory as Ricochet takes things to the air with the corkscrew, but nobody home. And Humberto Carrillo looking to capitalize on the misstep. On the shoulders, Death Valley driver on the outskirts of the ring. And correct me if I'm wrong, you're gonna have to check back the tape, but I believe that is the same maneuver that Angel Garza used to the outside to Mustafa Ali last week. Los Lotharios game planning together in this match, or excuse me, in this tournament. Ricochet just trying to fight out between a rock and a hard place right now. The one and only is definitely the underdog in this matchup. Ricochet on top, Humberto gets caught! And there's a crossbody by Ricochet to the outside. Because of the, no doubt, not being 100% factor in the recent losses over the last eight days, that is why we call Ricochet the underdog tonight. Humberto has controlled the majority of this contest, but Ricochet trying to change the pace. Humberto rolling to the outside again, but if there's one thing we know about Ricochet is that there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide up and over that top rope. The one and only putting on a showcase that only the human highlight reel can. Carrillo trying to get his whereabouts on the outside. Meanwhile, Ricochet going for the moonsault. Humberto a little out of position, and Ricochet better be thanking his lucky stars. He landed on his feet. But unfortunately, that allowed Carrillo to shake the cobwebs off. And I'll get back into this matchup. And once again, just in a snap of the fingers, Humberto takes back the momentum. You see how quick it has been for Humberto. Every time Ricochet gets rolling, one simple maneuver is completely changing the tides of this match. That speaks volumes to what endurance Ricochet has in the tank tonight. Humberto can't, trying to stay on the offense. Ricochet fire his carry position and he rolls out with it. Ricochet is hurt. Humberto Carrillo smells blood in the water. And both members of Los Lotharios could be punching their ticket to the quarterfinals back to back weeks over a team that has done them wrong in the past. What a maneuver by Humberto. Scaling the ropes in the most unique way into the moon so but Ricochet survives. A close call for the one and only, but the heart, the soul of Ricochet continues to persevere. That was an amazing maneuver by Humberto, the way he utilized the ropes. 
to his advantage. A springboard so unique out of the arsenal from Humberto, but Ricochet has still got some life left in him. Now Humberto once again just trying to shake the cobwebs off. Meanwhile, Ricochet full height of steam, keeping it simple off the forearm. Humberto rolling to the outside again, but when is he going to learn his lesson that there is nowhere to run from a man who can jump from pillar to post? Ain't afraid to take things to the heavens, and there is the corkscrew that Ricochet was looking for earlier on in this match. This time it lands flush, and there is a downed member of Los Lotharios in aisle seven. Once again, Carrillo on the outside. And Ricochet's heading to the top. Oh, and Humberto, smart to move out of the way there. Not allowing Ricochet to take things to the sky like he wanted him to. And Humberto almost playing a game of cat and mouse with Ricochet right now, realizing that Ricochet is moving a little bit slower in this match. But Ricochet still, however, able to get the upper hand off the top rope. And down goes Carrillo. Ricochet's got a few unique tricks of the trade in his arsenal as well. Some maneuvers that he doesn't pull out too often, but when he does, they are effective, just as we saw in that maneuver previously. Now look at this, could be going for a, an unprettier. Oh no, look at this submission hold, another maneuver that Ricochet does not pull out too often. You see how the knee wrenches into the trapezoid to the shoulder of Humberto Carrillo. Humberto down, Ricochet off the middle buckle. Such great heights off the moon salt, but it's not enough to keep Carrillo down for the three. Ricochet is putting on a performance tonight. It speaks volumes to the superstar caliber of the one and only, but Humberto doesn't give a damn who you are, where you've been, or what you've done. He wants the victory. He wants to see his name in the lights moving on to the quarterfinals of this tournament. Things are starting to roll at a quicker pace. Back and forth, the momentum swings. But only one man can move on to the CWC. Will it be Humberto Carrillo or will it be Ricochet? Ricochet, oh, looked like he would have been eyeing up the ropes, but Carrillo stopping him in his tracks in a tilt-a-whirl backbreaker that the late great Eddie Guerrero would be proud of. Now it's Ricochet on retreat trying to create some distance as Humberto Carrillo nailing him into the spine with that tilt to world moments ago and sends Ricochet for a crash landing to the outside. You said it earlier, we'll say it again. You remember the spear of Braun Breaker cut Ricochet in half last night? The press slam maneuver of meaner than evil himself. And then Omos dragging Ricochet all around ringside throwing him up, throwing him down. Ricochet not coming to this matchup with 100% endurance tonight. The midsection of the one and only has got to be bothering him in this pursuit to become the next quarterfinal participant in the Cruiserweight Classic. And Humberto's trying to capitalize. Going for a springboard, but Ricochet says otherwise. And now a springboard by Ricochet, but Humberto says no. These two men did their homework coming into this match, but it Oh, you better not turn your back. Backslide. Ricochet's going to steal it here. Not just yet. Similar to what we saw in the opening round. Matchup between Johnny Gargano and Akira Tozawa a few weeks ago. Gargano resorting to a pinfall, quick pinfall, to steal the victory over Akira Tozawa. Ricochet trying to do the same with that backslide. Carrillo popped out. And that was an awesome counter you saw a moment ago. Ricochet was going for that discus forearm, but Carrillo was already mid-air and hit that lariat. Who's gonna get the upper hand here? Again, the pendulum of momentum continues to swing back and forth. Humberto going back to the basics with what works in this match. Another tilt to world backbreaker. Ricochet avoids. Now it's Carrillo down and Ricochet just jumps up in the air. A simple senton, but then follows it up with the shooting star press. And off the combination maneuvers, Ricochet scales the ropes from the heavens with the Phoenix Splash. Dead center of the ring, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Ricochet is going to the quarterfinals. An incredible matchup, an incredible performance showcasing the heart the soul and the resilience of the man we call the one and only 
Ricochet. Here is your winner, Ricochet. Well, the next clash in the quarterfinals of the CWC is set. For the first time since December the 9th of last year, the big strong boy Tyler Bate will go one-on-one -on -one with the one and only Ricochet. But coming your way next Saturday afternoon is the Irish ace, J.D. McDonough, battling Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze, in the first round of the CWC. And also coming your way seven afternoons from this evening, the invincible Ilya Dragunov from Raw. All the way from Spain and representing SmackDown is the young and exciting Axiom. The final matches in the first round of the CWC coming your way next Saturday afternoon, live at 3 p.m. Eastern time, right here in the Hammerstein Ballroom. And as for tonight, Tyler Bates sees his hand being raised, and as does the one and only Ricochet. Another quarterfinal matchup is set as the Cruiserweight Classic and Tournament continues to unfold. Thank you for joining us this afternoon in Manhattan, New York. Tonight, the one and only Ricochet sees his opportunity and is victorious in the Big Apple. When I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, don't need no cap. I'm a rock.